Morning, Commissioner. Yes, sir, if you have a minute. Morning, Commissioner. That's good. That's good. Morning, Commissioner. So um, I know SWAT uh, executed um, operation here. It started just after 7 o'clock this morning. Can you tell us um, in, re in relation to what is associated with? Yes, good morning. This is just one of many operations that have been conducted and will continue to be conducted by specific units in the Trinidad Tobago Police Service. Uh, I wish to thank the public. The public have become very instrumental in assisting us to the success that we have been acquiring over the last few months. The public working with the Trinidad Tobago Police Service working hand in hand. We need the information and one, if I get the information we can turn it into intelligence and then have successful operations. This here is just one of the many operations as I stated. Um, this is the home of Mr. Aboud, Mr. Patrick Aboud Jr. Um, we got intelligence thankfully through members of the public uh, in, informing us that there was um, um, information leading to possible illegal activity uh, in particular dealing with um, illegal firearms and narcotics in, in, in on the premises we, we acquired the relevant warrant and again what I do with these type of operations we go directly through the special operation response team I wish to thank ACP Williams he's the ACP for the Northwest region he has been very instrumental in fact ACP Williams um, in over the last few weeks we have seized 17 assault rifles nine by one individual that a certain magistrate decided to send him on bail the very next day but that's okay that's another story and and mr Merritt, so there's nothing wrong with that but as we pertain to this matter um an individual has been held at this time we have um, we have seized an, an illegal firearm the, there's um we have the canine unit the air the air support units of the trans Tobago police service and this will go on for several hours again it, it's um we have the safes that we have to look at um and again I, will, I also wish to bring uh, a concern that I heard that the media, they were trying to contact the Ministry of National Security to get information pertaining to this operation. I wish to clarify that the Ministry of National Security has no interaction, no involvement, no direction, and they would obviously not be informed of any operation that takes place with the Toronto Tobago Police Service. The Toronto Tobago Police Service, we are an independent body. If we make any decision pertaining to any operation, the Ministry of National Security will not be notified, whether it be uh, an arrest or warrant or search on any individual Individual, regardless of who the individual is, where they are from, be it politician or not, that is not the role of the Ministry of National Security. Whilst I remain as the Commissioner of Police, the Trans Tobago Police Service will remain as an independent body, and regardless of who the individuals are, there would be persons who would have concerns because of what I am doing. You would have actually heard it on CNC3 yesterday morning. People are concerned because I am opening the Pandora's box. People are concerned because I am moving to pushing the envelope to ensure that the rights of law-abiding citizens will have precedence over the rights of criminals. And I will continue to do so. So regardless of where it is, this is definitely not witch hunting. I know matters like this would become sensational. Uh, I am not here to prove a point when people continue to ask for big fish. But within the last year, we have seen operations, successful operations in um, West Moorings, in Val Seine. Um, we've gone to Gulfview um, in areas here in St. Clair. And be it politician or anyone else, if someone breaks the law, the Trans Tobago Police Service would do what is required. No one is above the law, but in the same manner, we will not go to witch hunt to prove a point about what is known as big fish. Four gang, gang um, persons that can be seen as holding senior positions in gangs have also been charged recently. So what I'm, I will continue to do is to go after whoever it is, regardless of where that person is, um, political affiliation, ethnic composition, geographical location, financial background, it is irrelevant to us. I will continue to ask the public to support us so that we can support you. Thankfully, and, I, and again, I, just to close, these situations with these operations, in many instances, um, the police services worldwide, for every five uh, operations like this, four will be unsuccessful. And when those four are unsuccessful, that is when it is the media and society will continue to come down on the police service. So far, all of these operations we have conducted, these what would be deemed high-profile operations, there's been a 100% success. And if it is, I, I, I'm waiting for the day when something like this will happen and nothing is found, then it is people will come down on us. But I am willing to, to step out to the crease and do what is required because if we get information, if we get intelligence, we would act and we would act accordingly within the law. Well, Commissioner, you also, you are obviously adhering to your mandate of also class in terms of an even if, even if it's an upscale area as we did see previously a couple of months ago and we are now visiting a very upscale area which is just a stone's throw away from the Chinese embassy. 
Yeah, and, and that is it. So it, regardless of where the location is, we would continue to operate. As I said, um, four gang leaders have been charged. Um, there was a raid recently in West Moorings. There was the other situation where the Venezuelans um, who were being held in another house in West Moorings. There was a house that was raided in, um, in Valsin. And again, so it is irrelevant to us where, where the location is. If we get the intelligence, the information, we will, and we verify that it is, it is something that is substantive, that we can actually have a, a, a successful operation, we would get that warrant. And again, it shows that what we are doing now is we are changing, we are changing the, the, the system where persons felt that um, they believe that we were not going that direction because of the concern of what society would say. I am not here to please anyone. I'm not here on a popularity contest. I would step on toes if I have to, but I'm not. I'm here to look after the rights of the law-abiding citizens. For far too long, law-abiding citizens, their rights have been infringed, and certain, certain persons would continue to be concerned because what I'm doing is stepping on toes. It's big business. It's big money. I'm not speaking in, in, in the situation that this in particular, but the fact is, you would have seen it. You would have seen it on CNC3 yesterday when you bring an attorney, and he is upset that the commissioner of police has uh, um, decided to Voices concerned that a magistrate decided to release someone after being held with nine assault rifles. This is not a banana republic. And if it is that the criminal justice system, persons feel that they are so high and mighty that they must not be criticized, well, so be it. I will say what I have to say because for far too long, as I said, the rights of the criminals seem to take precedence over the rights of law abiding citizens. And persons would be offended. You know, there, there's a saying there, and not to do with the, the CNC3 interview yesterday. They, you have criminal lawyers, and criminal lawyers are very important because they have a part to play to deal with the criminal justice system. But they are also something called lawyer criminals, and they are individuals that the police, we are also investigating, I wish to state now, that there are certain attorneys who we are investigating that have now crossed the threshold, crossed that line between conducting your, yourself in a, in a professional manner to being involved in aiding and abetting sympathetic and actually being employed by criminal elements, and they use the cloak. I, regardless of where, where you use, whatever you are, whoever you are, if it is you break the law, we will be coming after you. Commissioner, now, in the last couple of uh, months, you have really, um, pre as you said, pushed the envelope. And uh, many people might think, because you're a commissioner, that you might be immune to threats. But within the last couple of uh, months, has that threat level increased uh, since the last time you spoke? Yeah, definitely. There have been 27 um, death threats on myself. Sometimes you have to look at a different line. In the United States, for example, there are dozens that will take place on the U.S. president, but much more now on this U.S. president than years gone by. But there's a difference with an idle threat, someone just being um, mentally unstable, being um, just emotional, to a clear and present danger where there's a direct and a proper operational plan to be able to, um, to, to do what is required. So there have been at least four or five where there was a clear and present danger that there was a clinical operation planned to assassinate me. Um, and I wish to give the public the assurance that I could handle my story. Um, it will not in any way deter me. If it is that I did not get these threats, so then I'll be concerned. The more threats I get, it means that I'm doing my job. Commissioner, thanks so much for your time there. Uh, Commissioner of Police, uh, Gary Griffith, there, giving us an update here about the SWAT operation that started around just after 7 this morning. Um, he indicated to us that there was an illegal firearm found on the premises. Sources also indicated to me that it was found in the living room area wrapped in a shirt. Uh, the operation continues here behind me here. Uh, several senior officers still on the scene, the commissioner just leaving, but um, also indicating that uh, they will continue this type of work going forward. Uh, they will not be in any way intimidated or, um, by anyone or any personnel as they continue to go, um, as they continue to go to fight crime. Reporting for CNC3, I'm Mark Besant. Yeah. Yeah.